you for joining me in this series of Ask the Business Data Analyst, where we will explore different questions related to work done by business data analysts. This video is brought to you by Tech Canvas, which is an IIBA and PMI authorized training partner. Tech Canvas offers project management, business analysis, analytics, and domain certification trainings. I am Priya Telang, a senior data analyst with a diversified professional experience of 10 years. I'm passionate about using data to solve problems. I'm a Tableau Desktop Specialist and IIBA Certified Business Data Analyst. So the question for today is, what is diagnostic analytics? So first we look at the definition and understand what exactly is diagnostic analytics. We look at some examples, the process, and finally, the advantages and disadvantages. So we covered descriptive analytics in our last video, where we explored the question of what is happening. So we clean, summarize, report, and visualize data. You can check out the video for a detailed understanding. Now, we move on to the next step of a more advanced analytics, that is diagnostic analytics. We will look at how it is done using all these mentioned techniques in a few minutes. Now, as the name suggests, diagnostic analytics is nothing but a root cause analysis. Say you're working in an IT firm and you realize that your work backlog is steadily increasing and you're not able to finish off the tasks. You try to investigate what is happening. You find out where you're spending most of your time check if a modified work schedule can help, and so on. Finally, you go on to find that most of your time is spent in meetings across different teams, and you then come up with a mitigation plan. So here we explore the question, why did this happen? Now, in our everyday lives, we don't use any complex tools and the amount of data we deal with is usually very less. But in the case of organizations, this form of data analytics is done using different tools and programs on enormous amounts of data. Let us see how diagnostic analytics is performed in organizations on large data sets. So we dig deep into vast amount of historical and current data using different techniques like data drilling, right? which is nothing but a detailed analysis of data using those variables driving the observed trends. For example, we may drill down from category-wise profits to subcategories, and then further drill down to products to find out the reason for profit dips in those products. Next is data mining. Data mining is the process of analyzing enormous volumes of data to find patterns, discover trends, and gain insights into how that data can be used. Data mining tools include powerful statistical, mathematical, and analytics capabilities. For example, data mining can reveal the best marketing strategy. Hypothesis testing is used if diagnostic analytics is historically oriented, like the reason for dipping profits may be due to the demand supply mismatch in the last month. So here we test whether what we believe the hypothesis is true or not using the data. The hypothesis directs your analysis. And lastly, correlation analysis examines how strongly two variables are linked and how they affect each other. For example, uh, say a high positive correlation was observed between the sales of diapers and beer meaning people buying diapers were also buying beer, right? So this is nothing but the correlation between these two variables. So these are a, a few techniques that are used when we are performing diagnostic analytics. Now, what do you think? How does diagnostic analytics help organizations? As we already discussed, right, it helps investigate the root cause of why something is happening, like exploring an unexpected drop in revenue. 
Now here we may have to examine additional data sources, internal and external. It helps organizations understand what trends and patterns are driving the market, like shift in customer behaviors. It helps understand its business performance, what is working well, what is not, the impact of internal and external factors. For example, a company can shortlist the marketing strategy that worked the best and invest more resources in it. It helps organizations make well-informed, data-driven decisions, as well as fix problems, if any. Let us look at some examples. A retail product popularity. So, say suppose a retail chain found out that there was a sudden spike in vegan products. After conducting a diagnostic analytics uh, process, they found out that the attributes correlated with adult food items and customers living in the southern part of the state. Market research revealed that many vegan companies had launched their products with ads highlighting the health benefits. This was a valuable insight for the company. They can further check if this trend will continue in the future and would it be worth adding more vegan products to their shelves using other advanced analytics like predictive and prescriptive analytics. Explaining customer churn. Now, a company experiencing churn can take feedback from customers and analyze this data using diagnostic tools to pinpoint the reasons and take corrective actions. These insights can prevent the loss of customers as well as enhance the experience of existing customers. Next is reducing attrition. So say suppose an organization is experiencing attrition in one particular department. Using diagnostic analytics, they can explore why are employees leaving. Now employee attrition can be very costly to an organization. So in order to tackle it, maybe they can drill down to specific roles which are being underpaid in the, uh, as compared to the market. So the organization can use this insight to examine the market pay skills, offer other perks, etc. to retain their employees. These are a few examples of how diagnostic analytics is used in the industry. Let us now explore how diagnostic analytics is done using a real life example with the help of the popular data visualization tool Tableau. Okay, so this is the Tableau dashboard that we have prepared using these four different worksheets. So let us look at this worksheet first. So here we have profit on the Y axis and we have different categories on the X axis. So basically we are understanding the category wise profit, right? So when we see, we can immediately identify that furniture has the lowest profit, right? So when we click on furniture, we, can, we are further drilling down from furniture to uh, looking at the subcategories of furniture, right? So here also we have the subcategory wise profit, right? And we have different uh, subcategories in furniture, say bookcases, chairs, furnishings, and tables. Immediately we can see that tables has the lowest profit. Now our aim here is understanding why tables is having such low profit. So basically, low profit, low table profits is the diagnostic analysis that we are trying to uh, perform here. So let's click on tables and look at the trend, profit trend analysis, right? This is nothing but part of data mining. So if we take a look at uh, the trend analysis, uh, which has profit on the y-axis and the date on the x-axis, we can see that majority of the profit for tables is always be, uh, negative, right? There are only a few peaks which are above zero or positive profit. And there are three major dips in March 2016, January 2017 and October 2019, right? And all other profits are low as well. So we can see that across all these years, across different months, the 
profit um, you know um, has been very low for tables now we are trying to understand the root cause for low profit tables so, uh, low profit in tables so what we have done is we are doing correlation analysis here of for profit versus discount profit on the y axis and discount on the x axis so here we can immediately see that as the discount increases the profit is decreasing so looking at this graph we can conclude that maybe the reason for low profits in tables is because of the higher discounts that we are offering and business can now take corrective action by reducing the discounts or maybe further investigating on what is happening to the profits so this is one simple example of how diagnostic analytics can be performed now let us look at the advantages and disadvantages of diagnostic analytics so diagnostic analytics it goes beyond you know simply looking at patterns to find the root cause of problems it helps you get value from your data by enabling deeper search for answers it helps you basically find the root cause of what why exactly that is happening it enables better business decision making and growth uh, while in case of disadvantages diagnostic analytics focuses only on historical data why something happened in the past it does not provide actionable future insights so further advanced analytics like predictive and prescriptive analytics is required before business can actually go ahead and uh, make decisions or take actions so i hope you enjoyed this video on diagnostic analytics and you got a broad idea of how it is done let us know your questions in the comments and we will take them up in the next episode Stay tuned for more interesting videos in this learning series. Thank you for joining us and good luck.